Welcome everyone to episode four of the Two Ball Blog podcast. Uh, it's been a while, there hasn't really been too much going on in the uh, Premier League and in the uh, NBA especially, it's been very quiet. Uh, so I think this will be a weekly preview review show for the uh, Premier League. Every Friday I'll put it up every night uh, just before the EPL starts on the Saturday night for um, Sydney time at least. Uh, I've also just uh, put the podcast up on SoundCloud so it's easier for everyone to reach. So if you can follow me on there, it's TBB Podcast. Uh, I'll link it in the description on the YouTube post and also in the uh, blog post on the website. So uh, we'll g- just jump straight into it with the uh, Premier League from last week, which was a uh, kind of a you know, not very exciting big start to the season. I mean, you can tell the teams are still very rusty, but we'll start with United and Tottenham, which is the uh, one of the two games that I did watch, and United really, really unimpressive in their first uh, the first game. They were dominated, to be honest, in the first half uh, by Tottenham. Tottenham had some good chances. Eriksen put through by uh, Harry Kane, who uh, unfortunately put it over the bar, and uh, Sergio Romero forced to make a good save when uh, coming off his line. I think it was Eriksen again with that one. So. Um, yeah, really a poor showing from United. They were lucky to get away with the goal for one. Uh, on the counter-attack, a poor pass from Bentalab just uh, gave United the ball. They bombed down the sideline and then they whipped it into Rooney who I think you know, took his time to even get his foot to the ball and in the end it was Kyle Walker who put the ball in the back of his own net. So um, it, it, I'm sure Rooney would have finished it. He, he's four goals away from being United's all-time goal scorer. So I'm sure he's he's keen to be getting on there, but uh, it was a, a good performance from the United, the new signings at least. Uh, I think Damian definitely would be, I think he's up for consideration for man of the match at least for my part. But uh, Schneiderlin had a um, good defensive performance. I mean, nothing, nothing special, but uh, United knew that's what they were getting when they signed him. You know, just uh, track the ball down, tackle the opposition, recover possession, and then uh, distribute where you can. So, uh, I think Depay was Depay was definitely impressive. You could see he wanted to move the ball and settled right in. He, I think he'll definitely um, he'll outdo uh, Di Maria, which is uh, not too hard considering how poor of a season Di Maria had. But uh, the age difference, you know, Depay being twenty and then Di Maria being what twenty five. And also the leagues they previously played in, you know, obviously Di Maria with the reputation of a, a, uh, excuse me, Real Madrid player and Depay coming from, uh, what's his PSV, I think it was, I'll have to double check my facts, but, uh, yeah, I think that you look forward to a big season from him, he'll, I think he'll be banging in the goals, he, he didn't look too shy to, um, having a crack at goal, and there'll be, um, some more in preference impressive performances coming from them, so, uh, Schweinsteiger also made a brief, uh, 30 minute cameo, and, his first contribution to the Premier League was a nice little yellow card. So uh, that was wasn't the best. You can you can definitely see his age, but he'll be a um, he'll be, he'll be a valuable contributor when it comes to FA Cup, Capital One, Champions League. You know he can fill in where Schneiderlin does need his rest. So uh, we'll leave it there. I think Tottenham. Uh, you know it's a bit blasphemous from me coming from an Arsenal fan, but. Uh, they should be up for a decent season. They do still have some good players with them. I think they do need another striker behind Harry Kane because Adebayor is just... He, he's not quite the same player he was when he was with Arsenal, funnily enough. So, uh, I think they they definitely they had to rotate some plays uh, this game because of the uh, what's broken preseason that they had. They played Barcelona only a few days earlier. And then also... Um, uh, so United in Chicago and Tottenham playing across the world. Everyone was just all over the place. So, I mean, Lamella started on the bench. Uh, Alderweireld got the nod for Tottenham, but even then wasn't the uh, best showing from him. So, uh, two teams that should be in the top six, top seven for the end of the season, but obviously um, showing some uh, signs of rust coming off um, yeah, the off season. So, I'll move on uh, with a few of these games. I'll probably just touch on this touch on the score, who scored, and uh, that's really it, as I didn't watch you, although I, I watched just the first, yeah, excuse me, I watched the first half of uh, Bournemouth and Aston Villa, and it's amazing the story that, um, you've probably heard a million times, but how the, how Bournemouth was so close to being, uh, admit, going into an administration at the bottom of League 3, uh, coming back one of their players, a 37-year-old, 
uh, bringing them all the way to the Premier League and just how small their stadium is. I mean, 11,700 people, uh, it's a, um, it's a tiny stadium, you know, it's a college basketball stadium, if anything. So, uh, Aston Villa came away with the win with that, with, uh, Rudy Gasteed, uh, scoring the 72nd minute, but right from the start, uh, you could just see the, uh, the atmosphere, how loud everyone was, how eager, uh, Bournemouth was just to be in the Premier League how much energy they had and I think they were playing pretty well I mean some decent football like it's nothing special they are a championship side still but uh, it'd be good to see how they develop and grow if they do sign anyone there's been a lot of talk about Matt Ritchie who scored 17 goals and got 15 assists last season in the championship so look for him to uh, be uh, in trying to impress and if uh, Bournemouth don't stay up look for him to be trying to sign a new contract with say uh, you know Swansea or with another team that's kind of solidified their place in the Premier League so uh, moving on to Everton and Aston and sorry wow Everton and Watford another one of the new boys uh, Watford up 2-1 in the 83rd minute before Runa Kone haven't heard his name for a while uh, put the put Everton level sorry in the 86th minute so uh, Ross Barkley actually scored quite, quite a thunderbolt in this game uh, with his left foot, he's definitely one for the future, but unfortunately for Everton, his future might lie with Manchester City, so uh, that's another whole podcast in itself, but uh, I didn't get around to watching this game, Everton had a really poor uh, end of season last year, I think they had a run of about 10 games where they were getting loss after loss, you know, maybe pick up a draw here and there, but um, you know, it all started, funnily enough, with a 3-0 win over United, I was like, okay, well, you know, maybe they can turn it around, but they ended up finishing, I think, uh, bottom four, bottom five in the league, which uh, is very unlike, uh, very unlike Everton, you know, they're normally, uh, you know, at least top half of the table club, so, uh, Watford, I think, there's been a, um, you know, it's a bit ambiguous about what they are, you know, whether they're going to stay up, whether they go down, I think the, um, the general, consensus across the Premier League is that they're not going to stay very long you know they're one of those teams that go up and then go back down and hopefully they can just take advantage of the uh, money from the TV deal that every other team's uh, received so uh, moving on Leicester City and Sunderland after the great escape last season Leicester fired their manager Nigel Pearson which I thought was a bit stupid but uh, what can you do they won 4-2 over Sunderland um uh, James Vardy, Mares, and Albright turned all scoring for Leicester, while Defoe and Fletcher, the two strikers, God, I haven't heard their names for a while, uh, scoring for Sunderland. So, uh, Claudio Ranieri is taken over for Leicester City after Nigel Pearson. He's off to a good start. So, I mean, you can't um, you can't go wrong with with a win off the uh, first day. They're coming. I'm pretty sure they are in the top of their second place at the moment, just behind Man City. So, it's a um, you know, a good start to the season, I suppose, for them. Very early days, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, Defoe, it'd be good to see if he can uh, start banging in goals like he used to for uh, Tottenham and back in the day. Stephen Fletcher has always been a staple of the Sunderland attack, but he's never quite uh, pulled it together. I remember about two, three seasons ago, he was scoring goals, putting him away, and he was, um, you know, definitely one of the higher-rated Premier League players, but... He's um, definitely fallen off. I think that was, he had an injury last year, but just um, if he can pull it back together, I think Sunderland might have a chance, but I think they're definitely the Black Cats, as they're known, one of the favorites for uh, for being uh, relegated. So uh, just passing on, Norwich uh, losing to Crystal Palace 3-1, and uh, Zaha getting on the score sheet, Delaney, and Johan Kabai scoring in his uh, debut for Alan Pardew. And Nathan Redmond scoring for uh, Norwich in the in the loss. I think Kabai, uh, he's always liked playing with uh, Pardew going back to his Newcastle days. But uh, the one concern is that Mile Jedinak being uh, not even starting the game. He's uh, still captain for the team. But you'd think they should fit him into the, uh, in there somewhere. Being such an influential player. You know, especially for Australia. But, I mean, he is still Premier League quality. Uh, moving on, Chelsea Swansea, a bit of controversy with Courtois being sent off in the uh, dying minutes of the game. I think, uh, excuse me, it was um, back down to me. Well, oh, sorry, not down, to, not uh, dying minutes of the game. What am I talking about? Fifty-fifth minute. I thought it was a lot later. Anyway, um, a two-two draw. I think Chelsea 
uh, every all the big teams at least looking a bit rough. The Andre are you getting on the score sheet for Swansea's new club after coming across from, I think it was Marseille. Um, Swansea's definitely been one of those tougher teams, especially for Chelsea. I know they've had a recent history of uh, not exactly coming away with the wins that they should, and they do prove to be one of the tougher teams in the Premier League to actually play, especially away from home. Uh, even though this was at Stamford Bridge. Uh, I think um, you know Chelsea's got a lot to prove, especially coming after that uh, after the uh, title last year. They're um, they're in for another big year. There's no reason why they can't win it. They brought in Falcao, which has been uh, a bit confusing considering they uh, don't really need another striker. I mean, they did have uh, Didier Drogba, but I think Falcao is definitely a step down, if anything, which. Uh, says just how good Drogba is. So, I mean, he's moved over to, I'm pretty sure he's at Toronto FC at the moment. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't expect much from Falcao this season, to be honest. I mean, there are a lot of people out there saying, you know, what if he does, um, you know, come back and he's back into scoring form. And I was like, you know, if he does, then it'd be good for the Premier League in general. And, I mean, football fans as well. You want to see a player like that banging in goals to, you know, reclaim that form of glory. But, um, I just think his time's done, and I think Monaco is just trying to get as much money back as they can before they uh, get rid of him, you know, send him off to China or something, you know, he'll be playing alongside Nicholas Anelka and some of the other has been, so, um, yeah, there's not too much else to say, I think Swansea are in for a good season, they'll finish in the top half again, uh, Chelsea, of course, you know, they'll be competing for the title, so, yeah, moving right on to the... Uh, Unfortunate news of West Ham beating Arsenal 2-0 was rather depressing, if anything, actually. So, um, it, it was a tough um, a tough game to watch. The first 42 minutes, actually, were Arsenal dominating West Ham, you know, shot after shot. Some really impressive saves from Adrian, if I do say so myself. Uh, Giroud really should be finishing some of those chances, though. Uh, it was quite contentious whether Wenger would start Walcott or Giroud down the middle, but I think Arsenal's play style has now changed from having Giroud as the apex of the attack to having Walcott uh, making those runs through the middle. So uh, don't be surprised if Walcott starts up front against Crystal Palace this week. Uh, so West Ham scored in the 43rd minute. Uh, Kuyate uh, with the header pass check after a free kick from... Uh, Dimitri Payet, a well-placed free kick, I must say, but he really, Czech really should be organising his defence a lot better uh, for the um, set pieces, at least. I mean, he, he had a free header. It was uh, expected of any player to put away in the Premier League. Just an open goal, just past the on-rushing Czech, and uh, it was really, uh, it was no, West, it wasn't West Ham's business to even get near the ball. There should have been much better defending, but uh, the second goal, which is, um, if, if the first goal was, you know, kind of 50-50 on check, then the second goal was definitely on him, 100%. So, uh, it was a, um, a good slide, slide tackle from Francis Coughlin uh, to get rid of the ball. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain tapping it a bit too far forward. It fell to Maron Zarate before he um, unleashed a shot, a pass check from 20 yards. So, uh, it was funny watching the replay. Check goes one way to his left and then has to fall back to his right, but just can't make it. It just looks really lackluster and no energy, which is um, unfortunate because everyone knows just how good um, a good goalkeeper he is. I mean, he's 33 years of age. It's not like he's an old man who can't move around with arthritis in his knees, but uh, he really should be doing better from there. And I mean, that was just the, uh, the icing on the cake for West Ham. It was, it was funny. You, saw, you see these photos of an Arsenal fan who got the a uh, tattoo of the scoreline on his ass. So how about that for um, remembrance? Uh, moving on, Newcastle and Southampton 2-2. Uh, Liverpool and Stoke. Stoke Alona losing 1-0 to uh, Liverpool. Coutinho scoring late in, I think it was the 86th minute. And uh, Stokes are putting together a pretty good team. It was the first time, I think there's a bit of history in this match, that it was the first time a team's uh, finished the season with the exact same fixture than start of the season with the exact same fixture. So how about that for history? Um, it was one of the first games that Liverpool actually hasn't had Steven Gerrard anywhere in the lineup at all. Um, so it, it's a bit uh, confusing seeing them walk out without him. And Stoke, I think, will have a good season ahead of them. I think there was a stat that they have more Champions League winner than any other Premier League side. I think they've got six. And 
uh, just a few days ago. They signed Zodan Shakiri from Inter. So uh, they're building quite a good team. They, they had their highest finish ever last season. And they uh, scored their highest ever points total. So uh, they've got a um, they've got a good side. I think you know going uh, away to the Britannia and coming away for the with the win. Sorry for Liverpool is um, quite a feat. But um, of course it was a um, Coutinho rocket uh, to win the game. I'll, I'll put a video in the uh, post in the blog post. Sorry, um, yeah, just from incredibly far out, similar to his a few of his goals last season. So. Uh, moving right along to the last game, which was West Brom and Manchester City. Yaya Toure with um, absolute cracker of a goal, followed by a um, bit of a. I mean, sorry, uh, which was which fo which followed his his other goal, which technically should have been David de Silva's, but um, it, it's up for debate. I think Toure had a shot and uh, Silva clipped it through the legs of the uh, West Brom defender. So. I, uh, What's your coach's name? I think... Sorry, I'm trying... Tony Pulis. There we go. I just trying to remember the coach. Um, Tony Pulis came out and said that he took all the blame for the... Um, he'll take all the blame for that loss. That he came out a bit too offensive-minded uh, for the game. And uh, the way they were set up, you know, had Sadio Barinho and... Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, they had Barinho and Ricky Lambert up front. Uh, Ricky Lambert up front. Sorry, just being distracted by the headlines. Uh, Lambert up front, a bit too attacking minded. After they conceded the two goals, you could see that they were sitting back and just inviting uh, Manchester City to walk in. There were two very early, goal, early goals as well. So, um, yeah, just I think you know West Brom. Uh, you know they'll finish twelfth or so. Man City, of course, uh, contending for the titles. Not much else I really need to say. I think uh, Sterling uh, didn't have the best debut. I watched a bit of a few highlights of the game and. Um, didn't do too, too much, you know, I, I suppose when your team's up 3-0, there's not all that much that you really have to do. He ended up giving his, um, you know, act of goodwill is really surprising, actually. He, uh, gave his debut shirt, debut shirt, wow, uh, to a few fans in the stadium. So I think, you know, good on him for doing that, and he's, he definitely needs to get back on the, uh, the good books, in the good books with Premier League fans in general. So I think that's one step closer for him. Um... Moving on to this week coming up, uh, this only this podcast, by the way, will only be roughly about half an hour, if not less. So, uh, just a quick listen before the season. You got Aston Villa and Man United at Villa Park. Uh, I think United will come away with that, maybe with a uh, two 0 win. Even Aston Villa, just you know, they've lost so many players. They've got Jack Grealish uh, still there, but United will uh, start to kick on. I think uh, some controversy around that game as well. David de Gea being left out yet again. I um, mean, the controversy of Real Madrid rumors. So, uh, t <laughs> in, uh, air quotation marks, he's not emotionally ready, which I think is a load of crap. But, um, yeah, look for Sergio Romero to start again. Valdez essentially gone, as I already spoke about on previous podcasts. Um, yeah, De Gea, I think he's essentially gone. But uh, Van Hal's being downright ruthless. He, he's telling Real Madrid, you know, if you want this guy, you're going to have to pay big bucks for him. And, uh, you know, there, he's being a... He's being a smart ass to De Gea. I was like, listen, if you don't want to be here, you're not even going to play. I don't care how good of a keeper you are. We can get along uh, just fine without you. You know, they made that pretty clear with uh, the signing of Romero. You know, of course, of course, he's not. I'm not. I'm not saying he's the same class as De Gea. There's, uh, it's like comparing chalk and cheese. But uh, you know, Romero's a capable keeper, and you know, if De Gea goes, then they've got someone else there. It's not like uh, De Gea is allowed to hold uh, United by the throat. And say, listen, I want to go here, and they're going to pay whatever they pay. You're going to take Van Van Hal saying, "Go screw yourself," and you know we want you know x amount of x amount of pounds for you. So, um, yeah, it's just uh, it, it's a tricky situation for Van Hal to deal with. But I think being the uh, <laughs> tough customer that he is, he he should handle it pretty well. So, uh, moving on, Southampton and Everton. I think Everton will probably lose his game. To be honest, uh, not the best showing last week from the highlights that I did see. Uh, Southampton, despite losing Schneiderlin and a few of their players, Nathaniel Klein to Liverpool, uh, they should pull this one out. Uh, might be a one or draw, but I would say Everton. Uh, sorry, Southampton with a two 0 win. Uh, Sunderland Norwich. Unfortunately, I'm going to say is a nil or draw. Uh, Swansea, Newcastle. I want to see Newcastle do well, to be honest. They signed, in terms of uh, money spent, they finished second 
uh, just behind United, who spent around $300 million. So uh, it'd be good to see some of their players, you know, try and step up, make an impression on the new coach. And, um, you know, they might come away with a, uh, a tough, uh, well-fought win, even though it is at um, the uh, in the Swansea home ground. And, but it, it'll be a tough game. I think, yeah, Newcastle with a 1-0 win, probably a late goal. Uh, Tottenham Stoke, I think after the game last week, uh, Tottenham will be kind of <laughs> raging that they didn't get the win. I mean, they at least deserved a draw, but to lose that game, I uh, pretty, feel pretty bad for them. So, uh, look, I think they'll come out 3-0 win. Stoke City will come out fine. Actually, you know what? Make that 3-1. I think Stoke will get an early goal. Shakiri might put it away or um, one of the new boys. I think, yeah, Tottenham after that. Look for Ericsson. Harry Kane, who celebrated White Hart Lane. Uh, Rhyme accidentally. Uh, yeah, I think Tottenham would be too good. I think they do have the t the pieces to play well and uh, look for their players on the bench last season to come on and uh, make last week, sorry, to come on and make an impression after getting that week's rest. Uh, Watford West Brom, the uh, match of the round, of course. Uh, I'd like to see West Brom get that win. I'll go with a one deal for them. Uh, West Ham and Leicester City. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I'm going to go Leicester just because West Ham beat us last week. Crystal Palace Arsenal, I think. Uh, last season, we had a bit of trouble with them, actually. The first game ended with a 2-0 win after Arteta got sent off. And uh, Giroud fired home ahead a, a lot uh, later, in, later on. Uh, I'm going to go with a 1-0 to the Arsenal. I know it's a bit tricky uh, going Crystal Palace away, but uh, I just got to have to go with my heart and uh, say Arsenal with that. Uh, Manchester City Chelsea now this is the game of the round obviously um, um it's at the uh, city of Manchester Stadium sorry excuse me Eddie had Stadium going back a few years now uh, I think Chelsea might steal this one they'll park the bus and then score on the counter Man City still lacking a very good defensive line Co I mean not Courtois company's still there but uh, you know, Demi Kelly still isn't the player that you want in the center of your, um, with your center halves. Uh, you know, Fernando, Diallo, Toure, had good games last week, but then again, it was against West Brom. Uh, Chelsea wasn't all that convincing at Swansea, but again, it, it is still Swansea, so I think a 1-0 uh, win for them. Uh, rounding out the week, Liverpool and Bournemouth. I think Liverpool will take that 3-0, easy points in the bag for them. So, uh, that'll be it for this podcast. Uh, just a quick uh, housekeeping before I finish off. Just follow us on Facebook, Two Ball Blog. Uh, there's the website in the description. And tweet me on Twitter. It's Sebasian underscore Quinn. Uh, ask me any questions and I'll answer them on the podcast. Give me some more stuff to talk about. So I'll see you guys next week. And like I said earlier, I'll try and make this a weekly uh, podcast to go up on the Friday night to listen to the Saturday. Uh, it'll be on YouTube, check out the channel, and then on SoundCloud as well, so I'll put the link up on the Facebook page. Uh, good luck for the weekend with everyone, and uh, see you guys next week. Bye-bye.